We praise the Lord for being here today. Amen. Amen. Today is uh, Sunday, July 31st, and we just praise the Lord. We are Abundant Grace Church. We're located at 707 Wiley Street, Cedar Hill, Texas, 75104, and we can be reached at 972-723-2355, or by email at abundant.grace at att.net, or through our website at www.abundantgracechurch.net. Praise the Lord. Welcome everybody here this morning. And for you that are watching this video, we just praise the Lord for you. Amen. We're going to encourage you to listen to the word and uh, watch the video two or three times if you have to. Amen. Amen. Because it's uh, a mighty word today from the throne of God. Uh, you can, now if you're watching this video, if you're watching it on Ustream, uh, dot TV. And if you're listening to it, you're listening to it on PirateRadio.com at this time, amen? Under the title of Abundant Grace Church. So our message today, beloved, is entitled Christ's Judgment, or the Judgment of Christ, which means Christ is the one that is judging. We are not judging Christ. He is judging mankind, amen? Amen. Yeah. And as a subtitle, I want to add in also Christ's second coming. So we will be coming from 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 5. Now, a few comments on the uh, letter of uh, 2 Thessalonians is that the Apostle Paul is the writer. And he wrote it about A.D. 51 to 52 from Corinth. And the theme of this letter is endure during persecution. Now, our main verse text is 2 Thessalonians 2 and 5. Now, that's not our main preaching text, but our main verse text, uh, which says, Remember ye not when I was yet with you, I told you these things. Remember that no one will have an excuse. When they heard the preached word, when they read the word of God, they'll have no excuse when they stand before Christ. Amen. Amen? Amen. So most probably, 1 Thessalonians was the earlier letter, and 2 Thessalonians is to be dated right after that. Both epistles were written from the city of Corinth. Paul spent about 18 months there. And uh, chapters 1 and 2 of this letter deal with what we call eschatology, or end-time events, okay? So, the outline of this is endure during persecution, and Christ, the glorified Christ, will be returning. And pray to God that you remain firm during times of adversity or times when you are lacking in your faith. And know that chapter 2 talks about the day of the Lord, which is the return of Christ. And it deals also with prayer and their exhortation. Prayer, which is to pray always, and also to exhort the Lord. And Paul is exhorting the believers in Thessalonia to stand firm and pray during the trials. So we're going to deal with uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter, I mean 2 Thessalonians, I'm sorry, chapter 1 and verse 5, which says, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which ye also suffer. So let's see what Paul is trying to say there. The first word we see here is that you may be counted worthy. And that deals with 
living a life worthy of the blessings of God. As I said last week in our message, church doesn't get you to heaven. It is a stepping stone because you hear the word of God and are convicted. But going to a church does not get you into heaven. It's only through believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Okay? So we have to understand that God's word is true. And when we study the word of God, we need to pray and believe God for what his word says he can do. The words of Jesus are written and read in the Gospels. We know that. And in the book of Acts, where Jesus is quoted. That means that the words are true and powerful. So when we adhere to the words of Christ, with the words in red, we can have a life of victory through Jesus Christ. If we don't trust in the Word of God, then we won't be able to walk in the power and the newness of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to turn real quick, me myself, to 1 Thessalonians 2.12. And read, because it's very important. It says, That ye would walk worthy of God, who has called you unto his kingdom and glory. When you come to the kingdom of God, understand, you need to maintain a certain level of faithfulness. Now, I could use the word spirituality, but I won't. Because every religion is talking about spiritual things. But Christ isn't included in their spiritual walk. Spirituality or Eastern religions use that word a lot. He's a spiritual person. So what does that mean, I'm a spiritual person? Does it mean I'm going to heaven? No. It means I'm doing things, some spiritual things. What? You can burn candles. That's spiritual. Go to hell. You can pray to Buddha, go to hell. You see, you can pray to angels, go to hell. Pray to saints and go to hell. Matter of fact, if you're not a believer, you can pray to Christ and still go to hell. But when you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, but, you know, let me say this. There are many religions or so-called churches where they pray to Jesus and are not saved. You know, certain denominations, they pray to Jesus, but that doesn't mean that they're a Christian. So just praying to Jesus doesn't mean you're going to heaven. Jesus said, anything you shall ask the Father in my name, that will I do. But you have to have a connection with God through Christ. You can pray to a saint that is dead, and he's dead, so how can you get any prayers through to God? It's just only through Jesus Christ. You can pray to, I mean, spirituality takes in, like hugging a tree, you know, going on a mountaintop and screaming out. That's, no, that's nothing to do with salvation. Salvation is a relationship with the Father through Jesus Christ. There are many people that pray to a God, pray to a God. They pray to Mars and Jupiter. They pray to Venus. They, 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 they pray to all these different people, but they're not praying to God. How many know that people have different gods in their life? Because whatever controls them, that is their God. But there's only one big G. Oh, and he is comprised of three people, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's the Trinity. So we are Trinitarians. 
we believe in the Trinity. Father, Son, and Spirit, or Holy Ghost, in the old translations, right? Holy Ghost. So, because you're spiritual, or called Mr. and Mrs. Spirituality, because you walk with your hands folded, well, you can see a lot of people with hands folded, but Christ isn't their Savior and Lord. You see, people bowing down like this with their hands folded, that doesn't mean they're praying to who you're praying to. Think about it. Outward signs indicate things, but it's the inward that makes the difference. And if Christ isn't your Savior, you're not going to heaven, period. That's Christianity. Christianity isn't a religion. It's a relationship. It's a belief that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And that's what we're dealing with here. Christ's judgment. As we, you know, sang, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. So how do you think that there's any other way to glorify God? Any other way other than Jesus Christ? There isn't. That's what we stand on. Jesus Christ and Him crucified. King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Savior of all mankind. There is no other gospel. Gospel means good news. Eastern religions and all the other false religions, they're not good news. It's really bad news because they're telling you that there's a different way to get to heaven. Or preaching, and they preach or teach reincarnation. When you leave this life, you come back as something else. Depends if you were good in, in your previous life. No. There's only one. He's Jesus Christ. The incarnate Lord of God. That's it. There is no other way to heaven. You go on a spaceship, you can never make it. <laughs> You'll be floating in space and rotten. That's it. There's only one way to the Father, and that's through Jesus Christ. So, God chooses us because He loves us. And He wants to share His kingdom with us. Everything belongs to God. Everything. Okay. Somebody said, well, I bought this house. I bought that. I bought this car. It doesn't belong to you. What did you bring into this world? Nothing. What are you going to take out of this world with you? Your car? Your house? Your money? Your company? Nothing. You're either going to be smoke, or I mean, you're going to burn up, <laughs> if you believe in cremation, you know, burn now, burn later, or you're going to be buried in the ground, turn to dust, and then on the resurrection day, or the rapture, the rapture comes first, because your soul is already going to be in paradise, it's already going to be with Christ. But if you don't believe, what? You're smoking then? Yeah, you, you smoke before you, you go. They put your ashes in the urine or whatever. Okay? But your soul is smoking. So your your body that smoked will meet your soul that is smoking. And then you go into the big fire. The lake of fire and brimstone. And that doesn't sound too inviting to so how can somebody believe something so stupid as that? We believe in the resurrection. We have hope. That's what Paul's trying to get across. That there's going to be a judgment. And you're either innocent or guilty. And there's not going to be some high flute, racehorse, Haynes lawyer there to, to uh, speak for you. Jesus was saying, I know him or I don't know him. 